Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back to your day of the crypto news and analysis. And today, we're going to be talking about Ripple and XRP. I have some exciting things to really kind of talk about. So sit back, relax, and before we fully jump into this video, I just want to ask if you guys are new to the channel, definitely consider subscribing, turning notifications on. Also, if you guys are new or not new, definitely hit that like button. Also, comment down below your um, pretty much high target points for XRP long term, where you personally are out 100%. It doesn't matter how much higher it goes, where you pretty much sell your whole bag. Comment down below. I do want to hear those targets. Now, within this market, obviously, we're seeing a little bit of a volatile ride, but it is all totally fine. In fact, I do expect XRP to have its topping point either in January or February, depending on how you know, long this pretty much bottoming point for Bitcoin could take because I do think that we are riding the wave four right now before the massive wave five topping point for Bitcoin, which is where a lot of the fun starts to begin for this market, especially for something like XRP. So with that, we obviously have to talk about what is about to happen in terms of exit plans. If you don't have an exit strategy right now, if you don't know where you are personally going to be selling your XRP at, I think now would be the the best time to really kind of write down or keep a digital note or some sort of idea on when and where you are going to be selling because in the moment it's going to be very hard and it's going to be a challenge to control your emotions and actually get out at a good time so please guys have an exit plan now if you guys do want to get my personal exit plan or any of my trading indicators, you guys could go to ncashofficial.com. I do have the Ultimate Crusader Trading Bundle Pack on sale right now, 20% off. It is about $80 right now as it is $100, but it includes a ton of insightful gems, including over like 15 plus products that include a ton of stuff included with them. And also... With the Crusader Trading Bundle Pack, it includes all future products for free as well. So if you guys are interested in that, go check out NCashOfficial.com. Links will be down in the description below as well as in the comments below. Now, I do want to talk to you guys and I do want to address a few things. So first off, shout out to XRP Chiz. Now, he's saying, imagine XRP with clarity in the U.S. Now, I've actually discussed this. I've also talked about where we do get to if we did get clarity, if we pretty much won the lawsuit tomorrow, right? First off, think about all of the massive catalyst events. First and foremost, we know that XRP will get clarity. It's pretty much game over, right? After we get clarity, Ripple IPOs, okay, huge. Then we do see all of the US-based customers and clients like Bank of America and so forth rejoining the Ripple team and utilizing XRP as an ODL corridor or just pretty much utilizing the Ripple net products, including the liquidity hub, right? Now, with that, we also look at other things. Like, for example, we do see massive adoption happening for Ripple Net products as well as for XRP. And then, of course, we do see, you know, massive relistings across the board for XRP with massive retail FOMO. So, with clarity comes a ton of massive, you know, pretty much catalytic events as well. And I do think that that is what, you know, the future <laughs> looks like for XRP. I think that at that point, you know, nobody's going to really have a solid guess point on how high we go. It's just pretty much going to be massive retail FOMO with a ton of major, you know, great news, right? So I do think that, you know, clarity for XRP is extremely bullish. And I do think that this SEC lawsuit is also coming to a close very soon. Obviously, it could pretty much range on a little bit, but I think that we are closer to, you know, some sort of win than most people actually expect. Now, Talking about the liquidity hub, uh, we are actually seeing 23 open job positions at the moment to build up the liquidity hub. If you guys do see here, these are all senior software engineers, and it's actually crazy with how many jobs are actually within this, right? And we also see finance and trading as well. This is huge. I think that, you know, when we're talking about how much development is going on with this, of course, a lot of this is going to be implementation development as well in terms of financial institutions, in terms of the banking scene. There is a lot to work on, but this is huge. This is a massive hiring pretty much board that we're looking at right now. So obviously this liquidity hub is no joke. It's going to be huge. And this is the last piece of the puzzle for you know, XRP, and I'm going to get to that um, by the end of this video. Now, we also see here, SEC and U.S. government know this. It's all about liquidity, including why and when the SEC sued Ripple. The XRP ledger is a public good. If this is your entry point to XRP, it is all you need to know. Unpack this and you'll understand all. Stack and hodl XRP. Unleash XRP now. Listen, I've always said it that 
at scale, XRP at a dollar, it doesn't matter if you enter in at a dollar, at 20 cents, at $2, at $3, at $4. When you know where the, the actual limit is for XRP, you know it's limitless, okay? Think about it at scale when it's pretty much providing liquidity for nearly every financial institution, for nearly every bank utilizing CBDCs. You know, this is the B2B and the banking choice, you know, for liquidity options and for financial options as well. We also talk about line of credit. Not a lot of people talk about the SME line of credit. That is also a massive market within itself. The future for XRP and Ripple. I know that they have a bad name under them right now because of this SEC lawsuit, but I have not changed my you know, outlook on Ripple and XRP at all during this entire time. And if you guys knew about crypto, if you guys know about what Ripple and XRP are doing as well, you would not change your perspective either just because of this SEC lawsuit. Now we also see here um, Bank Alpha, or I hope that I said that name right, um, Alfala, I think it actually is. But again, I do apologize. I really kind of butcher these names. With RippleNet and its launch with Lulu International Exchange is first of its kind for Pakistan, which is the sixth largest remittance uh, receiving country in the world. Guys, this is no joke. <laughs> the sixth largest remittance receiving country in the world. A lot of things are happening happening at a rapid pace. With RippleNet adoption, you know, it is not slowing down one bit. That is why I said with the US stifling innovation, it would probably be in their best interest to, you know, pretty much not let this case drag on much longer. I understand that the SEC wants to save banks, but you know, at some point in time, I think physical banks are are pretty much going to cease to exist. They are extremely slow and inefficient, and I do think that digital banking is the future. So, you know, in my mind, I think that the stifling of innovation is pretty much allowing us to fall further and further down the food chain day by day. Now, we also see a Ripple Liquidity Hub trademark filed November 9th, 2021. Check it out, guys. So, this is a huge deal, okay? I think that people need to realize that at some point in time, you know, we're not going to have to worry about much in terms of XRP price appreciation. In fact, look at this. Seems no need of Coinbase or any other exchanges to relist XRP. It may have its own exchange and bank in the near future, and we need not to change our XRP to any currency maybe, right? And again, when we're talking about what Ripple was trying to build, I, I remember back in the day where a lot of people were saying that Ripple is essentially going to build their own bank at some point in time. And I do think that crypto banks are going to be a thing especially as we do march forward on in terms of crypto adoption and growth. You know, just this year alone or in the last 20 months, you know, the crypto market cap went from $125 billion to $3 trillion in 20 months. You are not seeing that growth anywhere else throughout the entire world. So when we're talking about what Ripple is doing with this liquidity hub, this is so massive. All these use cases with a lot of these utility tokens that I talk about on a day-to-day -day basis, it's so much bigger than any sort of, you know, top tier company on, you know, the NASDAQ or, you know, whatever the case may be, right? So, you know, in terms of stocks compared to crypto, I think that crypto is beating pretty much every other market right now in terms of global adoption and growth. It is huge. Now, we also see here, boom, another proof that Ripple is working with the Federal Reserve since a long time, right? Means Federal Reserve is going to use Ripple XRP Ledger. They are just waiting for regulations. Official Federal Reserve website. And this is from the official Federal Reserve website. We actually see here questions and responses about potential 24-7, 365 RTGS settlement service, okay? Again, we are seeing, yes, we see sufficient and growing demand for faster payment solutions, both in the domestic and cross-border setting, okay? Now, check this out. What is the ideal time to market for this service? Okay, cross-border solutions like RippleNet are alive and growing. Okay, so essentially, if they are seeing, you know, RippleNet being adopted on a day-to-day -day basis, all right, I'm just saying it now, with how much efficiency that RippleNet is is boasting for a lot of its con uh, connections and a lot of its partners and all that kind of stuff, right? What do you think that the Federal Reserve is thinking right now? Obviously, this is very important technology at, at the end of the day. This is disruptive technology that could allow for a lot lower cost, a lot of money being saved, faster and scalable payments on a day-to-day -day basis with cross-border payments, even just retail demand as well. You know, we're talking about P2P with XLM. I've always discussed XLM is also a giant in the room that nobody talks about. 
but a lot of these assets are doing incredible things. And, you know, the, the wide view public, that the, the normie investor or the normies in general that aren't even in crypto don't even realize what is about to happen. You know, we're seeing, you know, for domestic payments, a simple credit push service that offered ubiquity, you know, i.e. acceptance of the credit by all financial institutions and non-bank financial institutions could be brought to market in 12 to 18 months as the minimum mandatory service. Additional services request to pay could follow. Individual banks could, of course, build innovative new services on these new payment rails. Again, building these services on something like the XRP ledger. Realize what is happening behind closed doors. Now, we also seen a reply to this, and we actually seen this. This is, you know, overall what Ripple is saying as well. You know, real-time interoperability between domestic and cross-border systems is a critical capability to enable ubiquity and efficient reach. A variety of central banks and market infrastructures are exploring the capability using open source protocols and distributed ledger technology. There is great potential in these technologies, especially in enabling interoperability and real-time cross-border transactions. The Interledger Protocol, I again, the I've always discussed the Interledger protocol on this channel, and it's so huge in terms of these major connections, is an open source solution designed to synchronize transactions across ledgers, enabling interoperability across domestic or cross-border systems. It is important that new U.S. infrastructure be designed to leverage these tools. Okay, and again, Ripple sees great potential in leveraging digital assets to enable more efficient reach and real-time access to liquidity for cross-border payments. New systems should consider these technologies and benefits. And again, this is why I tweeted this out yesterday. I said, you'd have to be blind to not see what Ripple is building with XRP liquidity bridge plus on-demand liquidity plus interledger protocol plus line of credit for SMEs. 38 of the top 100 banks already working with Ripple. Must I say more? This is easily a trillion dollar asset. And at scale, you know, we already know where it could essentially go to, right? So prepare now. And I don't think a lot of people are actually seeing the wider view here, but obviously you guys already know me. I'm a visionary at heart, so I see the end goal for XRP. I see where we essentially will be at scale, especially overseas. You know, we are seeing so much RippleNet adoption, and I do think that it's only a matter of time before we get that clarity that we so much need. I mean, this is so mandatory at this point, and um, you know, I think it's only a matter of time before we see that clarity grow and we finally achieve it and it's going to be a very successful trip especially with xrp so with that being said i hope that you all enjoyed this video if you guys did definitely leave a like subscribe to notifications on if you guys don't want free content you guys are more than welcome to follow me on twitter and join the free discord down in the description below also like i said go check out ncash official right now um because guys i'm having a sale on that you know ultimate crusader trading bundle pack and it's a steal right now so definitely go check it out but with that being said i hope that you all have a beautiful day or a beautiful night wherever you guys are and just beautiful this has been nick Peace out, guys.